morning. morning. Welcome to Zion. We're so glad you're worshiping with us on this beautiful Lord's Day. If you're visiting with us, please fill out the welcome sheet that can be found in your pew and drop it in the offering plate or give it to an usher as you leave. Be sure to take your announcements home with you and read carefully through them, but there's a few I'd like to draw your attention to. Thank you to Jerry Daring for sponsoring our radio broadcast today. Today is the last day of Sunday school before summer, so the kids will be singing during worship. The last um, day activity will be making a flat Jesus to take home for the summer. We encourage you to make one too and share your pictures with us throughout the summer. Next week, we will be recognizing our graduating high school seniors during worship. There are books in the narthex <clears throat> that we would like you to sign and leave greetings in. After worship next week, there will also be a reception during the, during the fellowship time with cake. So be sure to join us. There will be a Taco John's fundraiser on Wednesday night from 4 to 8. All you have to do is take your family and eat during that time. 25% of all proceeds will benefit those who are attending the Denver service trip next month. Um, you're invited to join Pastor Jim on Thursday at 12 o'clock for Bible study. The topic will be Things Christians Disagree With, Women Pastors. Finally, this morning, we're looking for two delegates for the Synod Assembly that will be held in Sioux Falls on June 2nd and 3rd. If you're interested in being um, a voting delegate for Z Sandra, <laughs> for Zion, please contact Sandra or Ed Sukamil. Finally, this, I'm sorry. And with that, we begin worship today with our gathering hymn, number 364, Christ Has Arisen. Alleluia. you stand as you're able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. 
Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. God, who was rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Uh, you. Oh, let's remain standing and do our song of praise, verses 1 and 2. together. Almighty God, your Son, Jesus Christ, is the way, the truth, and the life. Give us grace to love one another, to follow in the way of his commandments, and to share his risen life with all the world. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. At this time, we would like to invite the children forward, and they are going to sing a couple of songs this morning. So kids, if you want to come forward and stand up here on the steps.
and stomp your feet like that. And let's clap together. That's it. Keep it going. Let's sing this little light of mine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. Sounds so good. That's called clapping on the back feet. All right, sing this real quiet with me now. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Yes, even when I'm afraid, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. I'm going to have you guys sit right where you're at, except I need Chase and Harper, please. Can you help me with something? All right. At this time, we are also going to recognize our Sunday school teachers. Um, so could I have Kelly Bretsch, Stacey Geffrey, Kelly Vanderweiss, Jess Mosier, Jen Wagaman, Chastity Madsen, and Melissa Kolb come forward, please. A reading from 1 Corinthians. Now there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of services, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Sisters in Christ, you have volunteered your time, your energy, and your gifts to the children, youth, and family ministries of this congregation. Thank you for sharing your giftedness to this ministry and the confidence that it comes from God and the training of the hearts and minds of the kids you interact with that they may grow in wisdom and be prepared to face the challenges of life. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for empowering these adults to care for the young ones in our family of faith. Thank you for blessing these servants with the gifts of your Holy Spirit, the wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. On behalf of the congregation, thank you for the time that you've spent with our kids this past year and the impact that you have had on them. God bless you and be sure to enjoy some rest this summer. Can we give them a round of applause, please. We have a small uh, token of appreciation as you have helped our kids grow in their faith. Um, so all of them will receive a plant that says, thank you for helping us grow in God's love. Thank you very much. You guys can go ahead and go back to your seats. Thank you very much.
before we continue with worship, there is one more special recognition that we would like to do this morning. Uh, we would like to take you on a quick trip down memory lane, and we are going back to 1983, which brought several noticeable advances to our lives that now we couldn't imagine life without, such as the camcorder, personal computers, compact discs, or as we like to call them, CDs, the original Nintendo gaming system, the minivan, but most importantly, it brought a new Sunday school music director for Zion, Stacy Gaffrey. <laughs> Stacy, I'm gonna make you come up here, please. <laughs> Stacy didn't know we were going to do this today, so this is a total surprise for her. Today, we are excited and honored to be able to recognize Stacy as she celebrates 40 years of music ministry with our Zion Sunday School. <laughs> We are grateful for your dedication and commitment to our youth, and we are so incredibly thankful for you. Would you pray with me? We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants in the Church of Christ, especially for the ministry and friendship of Stacy, and we pray that she may continue to exemplify the gospel in word and deed. Grant that we with Stacy may joyfully serve you all our days and finally rejoice in your glory through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Congratulations and thank you for your many years of music ministry. Can you give her another round of applause, please? <laughs> so before I let you go back to your seat, we have a, a small token of our appreciation for you from the congregation. So I'll have you look in that when you have a minute. And we also have more surprises for you this morning. <laughs> Following worship this morning, um, there will be cake during fellowship time as a celebration for your milestone ministry, and so we invite everybody to stay and enjoy some fellowship and cake with us this morning in Stacy's honor. And as mentioned earlier, today is the last day of Sunday school, so we will be doing Flat Jesus around 1030, and we invite everybody to color and cut out and take home a Flat Jesus and share his travels with your family with us this summer, so be sure to um, join us for that as well. Thank you very much. The first reading is from Acts, the seventh chapter, beginning with verse 55. But filled with the Holy Spirit, Stephen gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they covered their ears and with a loud shout all rushed together against him. Then they dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. And the witnesses laid their coats at the feet of a young man named Saul. While they were stoning Stephen, he prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he knelt down and cried out in a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. When he had said this, he died. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The psalm for this morning is Psalm 31. Please read responsibly. In you, O Lord, I seek refuge. Do not let me ever be put to shame. In your righteousness, deliver me. Incline your ear to me. Rescue me speedily, be a rock of refuge for me, a strong fortress to save me. You are indeed my rock and my fortress. For your name's sake, lead me and guide me. 
Take me out of the net that is hidden for me, for you are my refuge. Into your hand I commit my spirit. You have redeemed me, O Lord, faithful God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Please stand for the gospel acclamation. We will sing the refrain of hymn 333, Jesus in a Weary Land. the gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself so that where I am, there you may be also, and you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe? that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, 
so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. I heard a story about a teacher, and this was at a college level, but all of you folks who have ever taught at any level can probably relate to this. Uh, she loved teaching. She loved her subject. And one day she was lecturing, and she just felt so connected with what she knew and what she was going to share it was as if the words were just alive and the connection was there and she was in the right time at the right place and she was going to inspire everybody out there listening and maybe they would catch the enthusiasm and the fire that she had caught. And she spoke more and more and got more and more excited and at the end of the class period she paused to take a breath and looked out uh, and said, okay, any questions? Eager to see how the students had, you know, integrated the things that she had shared from her heart. And one student raised his hand and she called on him. And uh, trying to think, now which point of my talk will he probably ask me about? And he said, will this be on the test? Sometimes you and I might have had a similar experience. Maybe for those of you who are parents, grandparents, and you've tried to teach something to a kid, a young person, whether it's uh, how to bake or cook a meal, or whether it's how to drive a car, or uh, fix a flat tire, something like that, and you get excited about what you're doing because you enjoy it and you want to pass on this skill, this knowledge to somebody else. And then you hear, are we done yet? Can I go? I'm sure no parent out here has ever heard that phrase. <laughs> Years ago, I was a youth director at a church in North Minneapolis while I was attending uh, Luther Seminary in St. Paul. And about a block away was a man who had, uh, who had married a woman with four kids, so he had four stepchildren, and he was rehabbing a big house that he'd bought. And every weekend, his primary helper was his 14-year-old stepson. And I talked to the man about what he was trying to pass on to the boy, and he said, well, I'm teaching him how to work hard and be proud of what he's doing and learning. He'll always be grateful for that lesson. I talked to the boy about helping his stepdad work, and this is what he said, and this is basically word for word. All he does is work on that house. Work, work, work. I hate it. He never lets me have any time off to play with my friends. That house is his life, not mine. Mm. And I just thought, oh my Lord, how can I try to help that situation. What one man thought he was teaching or passing along was not what a teenager was uh, learning. In this gospel today, we also have a misunderstanding. We have some great words from Jesus that are still special to us today. If you know me, you will know my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. And that's where the misunderstanding kind of starts. I mean, think about yourself and the skills you've acquired. It's like there's what we want, and then there's what we need. There's what we know, and then there's what we believe. We're not, we know we're not completely there, but we know we're on the way. It's like chemistry, physics, trying to learn formulas, trying to learn how elements interact. We know some of it, but we don't know all of it. We haven't made all the connections yet. The disciples who've been with Jesus now three years, and by the way, when this uh, speech by Jesus takes place in the Gospel of John, it's at the Last 
supper. They've already done the meal. They've already done the Passover. Uh, Judas has already left. And this, these are the final words of Jesus to his disciples before they go out to the garden where he's going to be arrested. So Jesus is trying to make some significant points here to his disciples. And then Philip says, well, well, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. And you can almost see Jesus' face just collapse. And, and hear the sadness in his voice. He says, have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? I mean, all these months, Jesus has tried to get points across and have the disciples pick up on some knowledge and some certainty. And still, the disciples want to know. Jesus tells them what they need, and all they know is what they want. Well, it's pretty familiar. They still don't get it. They want to. They don't want to make Jesus feel bad, but they say, well, just show us the Father. They still don't understand the connection yet between Jesus the person and Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. In a few days, Sunday afternoon, this is Thursday night, Easter afternoon and Easter evening, they will start making connections when the resurrected Christ appears to them, and he, and this is a wonderful little passage in the Bible, and he opens their minds to understand the scriptures. Thank God that happened. After he's raised from the dead, he appears to the disciples, and he opens their minds. So they now begin to make these connections that they can't make it. Right now they're, you know, they're on the point of saying, well, will this be on the test? Uh, do I have to know this? How much do I have to understand? Because I don't know where you're going here, Jesus. That's why the first couple sentences of our text are pretty important. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. That's pretty important. I mean, Jesus doesn't say here, understand God, understand me. He says, don't let your hearts be troubled, believe. Some days our belief can be way up here. Some days our belief can be here. Some days our belief maybe is way down here. Go with what you've got. We are not always rock solid perfect on what we believe. There are times that we doubt. There are times we struggle. The disciples sure did, and they spent three years with him. We don't know everything about how the connections take place. The disciples continue to learn, continue to struggle. You know, when I, I've been a pastor a long time, and I still find little insights that I never knew before. And I go, how come I didn't see this till right now? Maybe I wasn't ready. But there are these wonderful little insights and little truths and stuff that we can see at any point in our lives that help reassure us, help, help make us remember my salvation doesn't depend on me. It depends on what Christ has done for me. <laughs> Thank God. I still remember one of my classmates at seminary uh, talking to a professor in one of our small groups and saying, Dr. Hanson, I have some days where I believe really strong, other days where I'm doubting. What if I happen to die on the days that I'm doubting? 
what, will I still go to heaven? And Dr. Hansen paused for a minute, and then he said, in the end, what matters is not my faith, but God's faithfulness. Hang on to that one. In the end, what matters is not my faith, but God's faithfulness. I mean, at our, as we go through life, uh, hopefully, I mean, every day we will decide to live as Christians and decide to live for Christ. But the good news is, Christ has already decided for us. We can rest in that. that that's called grace, my friends. And grace has no conditions. Grace is just something you accept and you are grateful for and you learn to live it. So what do we do when we don't understand stuff? When we want to know, and it's not time yet. We're just not capable of knowing. Remember what the Apostle Paul even wrote? Uh, and I think this is in Romans. Paul says this, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then, when we go to heaven, then we will see face to face. Now I know only in part. Then I will know fully, even as I have been fully known. So there was a man who comes to Jesus in the Gospels and wants to be healed, and Jesus asks him, do you believe? And he says, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. This is the paradox of our human condition. Yes, I believe, but help the part of me that isn't so sure. Nothing wrong with that. We continue to come together as Christians have for 2,000 years, to hear his word, come to his table to be fed. Jesus loves us and accepts us and comes to us just as we are, and he says, you have all the knowledge you need right now. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe in me. We'll start from there, and we'll continue this way every day of your life until you come and you can know more fully.
has made us his people through our baptism into Christ. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. United in hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, the world, and all in need. God of life, strengthen our church to proclaim your gospel even in times of trouble. As we remember Stephen, we give thanks for the diaconal ministry. Bless all deacons and strengthen them for their bridge-building ministry between church and world. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, you show your steadfast love through mighty waters, towering mountains, uh, verdant fields, and arid deserts. Protect the Earth's diverse habitat from the forces of pollution, erosion, extin extin <laughs> extinction, and global warming. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Mighty God, your spirit guides us into all truth. Give us wisdom to world and local leaders and organizations as they begin, build, or renew relationships. Strengthen leaders and aid organizations in areas needing to be rebuilt following conflict, unrest, or natural disaster. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Loving God, you make your home among us. Abide with refugees, those experiencing homelessness, those fleeing war and poverty and all who question if there is a home in your heart. We pray for all who are sick, especially Joey, Gladys, Kathy, Dolores, Howard, Irene, Jerry, Connie, Duane, Ken, Barb, Esther, Michael, and Alan Gary. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Assuring God you accompany your people in uncertainty and change. Uphold people in this community who have recently moved, changed jobs or schools, retired, or are going through transitions of any kind. Lead us in your way. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. The, pe the peace of the Lord be with you always, and also with you. All are invited to greet one another with a sign of Christ's peace. You may be seated. In the joy and peace we are given through the cross of Jesus Christ, Please consider your gifts to Zion that will strengthen our ministry and mission together for the sake of all in need of hearing of Christ's love and grace for them. You can give online, in the mail, or in person here today. Children are invited to come forward and place their offerings in the For Children Everywhere box at the front of the sanctuary. Thank you for your gracious gifts to Zion and for your partnership in the gospel of Christ. We continue with our offering hymn. You are the way.
Would you stand as you're able? Let us pray together. Generous God, in this meal you offer your very self. We give thanks for these gifts of the earth. <clears throat> of this bread, reveal to us the risen one. In the pouring of this wine, pour out in service to the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Each of us is broken by sin and less than God has created us to be, but this does not disqualify us from being touched by God and serving God in any capacity, large or small, broken as we are. God uses broken things. It takes broken clouds to give rain, broken grain to give grain, broken grain to give bread, broken bread to give strength. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <clears throat> Let us pray in confidence the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Come in, O Christ, broken and poured out for you. Please be seated. Uh, here at Zion, we practice open communion, which means that all who believe that our Lord Jesus Christ is present in the bread and the wine are welcome to gather. You do not have to be Lutheran. You are welcome if you're a Christian. We have gluten-free wafers and grape juice available. If kids want to come up, uh, I hope they do, if you want them to commune, have them cup their hands. If they want a blessing, if you'd have them fold their hands, that would be helpful. Okay? The ushers will guide you.
Honor the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which you have received, strengthen you and keep you unto eternal life. Amen. Let us pray together. Gracious God, in you we live and move and have our being. With your word and this meal of grace, you have nourished our life together. Strengthen us to show your love and serve the world in Jesus' name. Amen. The God of all who raised Jesus from the dead, bless you by the power of the Holy Spirit to live in this new creation. Amen. We'll do our final hymn, and remember, head on out for cake and treats in the fellowship hall. one. Thanks be to God.